we're talking about a spinal soft tissue injury assessment as a doctor of chiropractic, we're usually talking about a spinal sprain assessment. So a spinal sprain is any time you injure any aspect of the spinal motion unit's ligaments. There are 10 ligaments, the anterior longitudinal ligament, the posterior longitudinal ligament, the disc, two intertransverse, two capsular ligaments, ligamentum flavum, an interspinous ligament, and a supraspinous ligament. Damage to any of these ligaments is considered a spinal sprain. Here's what the International Chiropractic Association policy on spinal sprains says. It says inherent. In inherent, we must qualify mean, means existing in someone or something as a permanent and inseparable element. So inherent in most spinal sprain strain injuries, there exists a biomechanical neurological component of articular malposition referred to chiropractically as a subluxation. Let's stop right there. Inherent means that they're, they coexist. You can't have one without the other. So if we can measure, grade, and locate the severity of a sprain, we can measure, grade, and locate the severity of spinal subluxation. Um, this also goes on to say, such subluxation, if not addressed and merely treated with soft tissue therapeutics or joint immobilization forms of care, may lead to joint fixation or instability and loss of motor unit integrity. Now it goes on to state, it is the opinion of the International Chiropractic Association and that such injuries evidence of the chiropractic vertebral subluxation complex should be analyzed and, if present, be corrected by specific chiropractic articular adjustments before immobilization procedures are applied. Lack of such correction of articular misalignment may result in permanent impairment for waiting more than an hour, much less days, may lead to joint fixation, motion impairment, neurological insult, and or hyper mobility of the intervertebral motor unit. Adjustive reduction of the articular subluxation must be accomplished with due regard to the soft tissue injury. Attempt to enhance recovery and contribute to the prevention of future joint motion impairment, neurological impairment, and deteriorative pathological consequences. Okay, so what is, it, what is that saying? Well, it's basically saying that um, inherent in a spinal sprain is a spinal subluxation you need to locate that spinal subluxation and correct it right away. So uh, when we have a sprain, we know that we have a hypermobile situation usually. Now, we may have, due to pain, spasm, inflammation, a hypomobile palpatory uh, finding, but we know if we've damaged the ligaments, the ligaments hold the spine in alignment under load, that radiologically, we probably have more of a hyper situation. And this policy is saying that the chiropractic spinal adjustment is the key to stabilizing this condition. Again, ligament sprains commonly occur, can be quite debilitating, frequently causing persistent joint instability, prolonged pain, progressive degeneration. A sprain is defined as an acute injury to a ligament or joint capsule without dislocation. Sprains are classified by severity. Grade 1 shows no clinically detectable increase in joint laxity. Grade 2, you start to see detectable joint laxity. Grade 3, significant joint laxity. We know that significant or joint laxity, and, and trying to determine this on x-ray, has already been proven out in research to be most accurately and reliably determined with computerized radiographic mensuration analysis. In this study presented in 2007, six board-certified medical providers who commonly read flexion extension x-rays were asked to use whatever tools that they normally use currently to determine the abnormal intersegmental motion in a particular study. Um, using whatever tools, those tools could be their PAC system, picture archiving and communication system, and all the beautiful measurement tools that they have available to them in those systems. It could be them using the, just their eyeballs. It could be wax templating. It could be drawing on their, on their screens. It could be anything that they normally would use. Now, when they were given 10 minutes of training on a computerized radiographic mensuration analysis system that's designed to help them pick up the abnormal intersegmental motion, and they put the same 65 sets of films, 75 sets of films back through, um, they had a 77% agreement level as to where the abnormal intersegmental motion patterns were. 
whereas previous to that they only had a 17 percent agreement level so significant improvement and of course the 77 percent is going to go up a lot if the providers have a lot of familiar familiarity with the system that they're using again they only got 10 minutes of training on this system so let's take a look at this we have a normal neutral a flexion and an extension which is what we need we pull up the report we immediately drop down to the report we look at the lateral cervical spine we see there's no break in George's line and we see that everything's below rateable there's no significant or significant joint laxity here but we also can go right down into the impressions part and we can see for angular findings and for translation findings all were, are within normal limits this is a grade one sprain finding on radiograph now we go to this one this is a DMX another form of taking an x-ray and here we have the patient in a flexion and an extension we pull up the report and the report simply says look again on the lateral cervical spine George's line is within normal limits on the cervical motion study we don't have anything that's rateable or significant severe but we do have and when we say significant or severe moderates can be significant clinically we're just saying significant as far as a radiographic finding um, it's saying that basically we don't have any rateable but it does we can go down now into the body of the report and it shows that we definitely have ligamentous laxity or joint laxity detectable on x-ray finding now so in this case we have a grade 2 spray in the last scenario we pick this up and we take a look at the test and we immediately see right in the cervical motion study that we have a rateable angular se angular segment at C3 which means that basically we have a severe or a significant sprain finding significant joint laxity grade 2 sprain findings at C3 and that gives you the readout of the angular finding that qualifies it so we can definitely become a lot more objective in our sprain or soft tissue injury analysis